Hi, I'm Coach Paul from Simple Endurance Coaching. We're talking this week on this Simple Endurance Coaching video podcast about how to ride faster for longer at gravel races by extending the amount of time you can ride at your threshold. In gravel racing, generally the longer you can maintain riding close to your functional threshold power, your FTP, the faster you'll be over the course. So, at a certain point in your training, you stop trying to increase your functional threshold power and work to increase the time that you can ride near or at your FTP. That means increasing your time to exhaustion, TTE, or said in a different way, extending your time at FTP. If you are able to hold that FTP for a longer time, you'll have more fitness to stay in your group throughout the race, plus you'll be able to hold off the fatigue for longer, allowing you to push through those really tough spots in the race. So in past episodes, we've talked before about how FTP is a made-up number. It's, it's a power that you are supposed to be able to hold for 60 minutes. However, FTP does not correlate in any way to any kind of physiological response in your body. What it does is it gives us a a reference point for our training. So if we have some sense of our FTP, we can shape our training plan to either increase the FTP or extend our time there. Okay, so the challenge of increasing FTP though is that there can be a ceiling or we can plateau. There's only so much you can increase your FTP usually in a given year, but we can train to increase the time that we spend at our FTP, our time to exhaustion. To improve that time, we do workouts specifically designed on gravel racing and improving our body's ability to process the lactate. A study published in the International Journal of Sports Physiology and Performance found that a six-week training program specifically designed for a gravel race improved power output and VO2 max in trained cyclists. That's a big deal. So here are some key workouts designed specifically to extend your time at FTP. Number one, Tempo training, sweet spot training, it's involving riding at a steady pace below your FTP. This type of training can help you improve your body's ability to use fat as fuel to a point and enhance your endurance. Research has shown that tempo training can increase the time to exhaustion at FTP. For example, we might do two or three 10-minute tempo or sweet spot intervals in the middle of an endurance ride to create a little more training stress. Number two, one of my favorites, but least favorites because they're hard, is over-under intervals. These involve alternating efforts just above and just below your FTP. What that does is it improves your ability to tolerate higher levels of lactate because you build them when you're above and then you process them below. This delays the onset of fatigue. Research has shown that over-under intervals can increase the time to exhaustion at FTP. We do a couple of different kinds of over-unders, including 30 seconds above, two and a half minutes under, or one minute above, and four minutes under. Number three is the progressive long rides. You simply ride for longer and longer, increasing your time riding at or slightly below Uh, your FTP, but this is considerably below. This is your endurance because this can improve your aerobic capacity and muscular endurance. Research has shown that these kind of long rides can increase your time to exhaustion at FTP. You know, generally long endurance rides form the basis of all of our training. So the combination of doing long rides and work just below and above your FTP can be really effective at extending the time at that to exhaustion. If we're doing tempo or threshold or sweet spot intervals, we can gradually, we can gradually increase that time, but then we don't increase the intensity. We might start with two by 10 tempo intervals, increase that to two by 15s, two by 20s. Then we can start to do the same with sweet spot and threshold and gradually make those longer, two by 30s. That way we get more fit and our TTE gets a lot longer. But 
It's not just time on the bike that gives us the ability to ride for longer periods of time at threshold. Strength training can be beneficial for cyclists in improving overall fitness and enhancing ride performance, but its direct impact on FTP is not really as important as the cycling stuff we do and HIIT training and tempo, blah, 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 blah. What it does is that the research has shown that adding um, adding regular strength training program to cycling training can lead to improvements in power output, muscular endurance, and overall riding performance. Specifically, strength training has been shown to found, has been found to improve one's ability to produce and sustain power during maximal efforts and sub-maximal efforts. In addition, Strength training can help cyclists reduce their risk of end injury by improving muscle imbalances and increasing overall body strength, stability, and flexibility. A study published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research found that adding resistance training to a cycling program improved power output and maximum oxygen uptake, your, your VO2 max, in trained cyclists. So strength training may not directly affect your FTP, but it makes you strong enough to withstand the challenges of increased training. The third tool to improve your time to exhaustion, how long you can ride at FTP, is recovery. Yeah, recovery. Recovery, recovery allows your body the time to heal after you beat the crap out of it. If you don't rest, you don't recover, and if you don't recover, your body does not adapt. It's, it's that simple. Here are some tips to help you extend your FTP in general. Number one, make sure that you are getting enough sleep. Sleep is when your body recovers and rebuilds itself. Without proper sleep, your body will not be able to recover properly and your FTP will suffer. Number two, eat a healthy diet and a lot of it. Eating a nutritious diet helps your body recover from workouts and maintain a high level of of fitness. And if you're doing a lot of extensive FTP training, you're probably going to need to eat more than you think you do. Number three, take active recovery days. Active recovery days are when you do light exercise or no exercise. Take the dog for a longer walk. This allows your body to recover and prepare for the next workout. Number four, use compression garments. Compression garments might be helping you reduce swelling and promoting blood flow and aiding recovery. The research is is mixed, but at the very least, if you're sitting around wearing compression gear, you're relaxing and resting. So when it comes to that second piece, the nutrition piece, there are a few key strategies to keep in mind during the training. Number one, it's really important to get enough calories. This will help your body maintain energy levels and recover from these workouts. One of the mental gymnastic challenges of my clients who are trying to lose weight happens when I tell them to eat more. You have to have the carbohydrates in order to fuel the work you're doing. Second, make sure you're getting enough protein. You might need to do some supplementing, but the protein helps your muscles repair and grow. Three, it goes without saying to eat a variety of healthy foods. This makes sure that you're getting all the nutrients your body needs. Plus, you need to stay hydrated by drinking plenty of water or electrolyte-rich beverages. In addition to increasing your ride time at FTP, your strength, and your nutrition and recovery, another really important aspect of gravel racing that we haven't talked about is your technical skill. Unlike road cycling, gravel racing involves riding on unpaved surfaces and navigating some tough terrain. So it's important to work on your bike handling skills because when you're not comfortable, you're burning up more fuel. So include practicing cornering and descending uh, and riding on loose dirt Um, ride mountain bikes that can help it can help uh, get you used to the cornering and turning and sliding a little bit a study published in the journal of sports physiology and performance found that mountain bike specific skills training 
improved performance in a cross-country mountain bike race. That makes sense, but it also can apply to gravel and cyclocross for that matter. Learning to descend on a rough gravel road when you're all over the place gives you a lot of confidence and helps you pass a lot of people in the races. That's all for this week on the Simple Endurance Coaching video podcast. Each week, I bring you what's working in training for everyday cyclists and runners. The full article is linked below in the notes. Visit my website, simpleendurancecoaching.com, and sign up for the regular blog updates and get a free video with six, I think, core exercises that work for all of us, work for everyday endurance athletes. What questions do you have? What do you want to talk about? Sign up for a free virtual coffee. And as always, hit the like button, subscribe, and share this with your friends. Thank you so much for watching and listening, and we'll see you out in the road.